Good morning. This is Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. This is the LaRouche Organization Morning Update. I'm Jason Ross, filling in for Harley Schlanger, who will be back tomorrow. This morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced a partial mobilization of military forces in Russia to defend the motherland and its sovereignty and territorial integrity, as he put it, from the West, which he said wants, quote, to weaken, divide, and ultimately destroy Russia. This announcement by Putin follows a call from the Atlantic Council to consider a preemptive nuclear attack against Russia. It comes shortly after the Shanghai Cooperation, excuse me, uh, yeah, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting in Samarkand, at which Putin held many bilateral meetings and was certainly not shunned. And it comes as the United Nations General Assembly uh, is engaging in its high-level debates. The question for us is, will the people of the West, will the people of the world, force a change of course before the world plunges into World War III? Let me read from part of the conclusion of Putin's speech. He says that the West has even resorted to nuclear blackmail. I am referring not only to the Western encouraged shelling of the Zaporozhia nuclear power plant, which poses a threat of a nuclear disaster, but also to the statements made by some high-ranking representatives of leading NATO countries on the possibility and admissibility of using weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, against Russia. I would like to remind those who make such statements regarding Russia that our country has different types of weapons as well. And some of them are more modern than the weapons NATO countries have. In the event of a threat to the territorial integrity of our country, and to defend Russia and our people, we will certainly make use of all weapon systems available to us. This is not a bluff. All weapon systems available to us obviously includes nuclear weapons. He said in his speech this morning, the goal of that part of the West, the portion of the Western elites, is, quote, to weaken, divide, and ultimately destroy our country. On the referenda that have been announced in the Lugansk and Donetsk People's Republics, in the Kherson Oblast and Zaporozhia, uh, where voting is to begin within a couple of days by residents of these regions on voting to join the Russian Federation, Putin said, we will support the choice of future made by the majority of people in the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics and the Zaporozhia and Kherson regions. He said that the Kiev regime refused to settle the Donbass issue peacefully, announced that it wanted nuclear weapons. He knew that an attack on Crimea, Russian Crimea, would eventually come under this policy orientation. Quote from Putin, the decision to start a preemptive military operation was necessary and the only option. Remember, at the time this special military operation began, Russia presented to the UN the fact that it was engaging in an act of self-defense. So to the announcement by Putin this morning, he announced a status update on soldiers with the Donetsk and uh, Lugansk People's Republic with volunteers there, giving them status similar to that of uh, Russian soldiers. And he called for a partial mobilization, which could affect up to 300,000 people. This involves reservists, those who have served in the armed forces, the West, he said, has gone too far in its aggressive anti-Russia policy, making endless threats to our country and people. Quote, the citizens of Russia can rest assured that the territorial integrity of our motherland, our independence and freedom will be defended, I repeat, by all the systems available to us. Those who are using nuclear blackmail against us should know that the wind can turn around. So let's talk some more about the setting for this. Uh, the Atlantic Council had just published an article, which we covered here on these LaRouche Organization Morning Updates, considering the use of preemptive nuclear strikes on Russia, saying that Russia would eventually have to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine because of supposedly losing in the special military operation. Now, this military operation has gone from a conflict between Russian forces and Donbas forces and the Kiev regime using NATO weapons to much more obviously and directly a conflict with NATO itself using Ukrainian soldiers and on Ukrainian territory. As an example of this, the London Economist took a break from gushing about the now deceased Elizabeth to call for the supply of long-range weapons, 
of uh, ATACMS, is the, the acronym, to Ukraine with a 300 kilometer range. These could, of course, strike inside Russia. But the London Economist said that Ukraine forces wouldn't dare strike within Russia because then they might alienate their arms suppliers. As though NATO isn't pushing for precisely this. The incoming head of STRATCOM, of Strategic Command, the U.S. Nuclear Forces, General Anthony J. Cotton, he said during his confirmation hearings in the Senate that there is new military planning required to take on two near-peer nuclear powers simultaneously, Russia and China. These people are thinking, how do we have a nuclear war against Russia and China at the same time? This is insane. The Izium Cemetery is being recast as a mass grave in a remake of Bucha, or the supposed gas attacks in Syria. Now, a mass grave typically used to mean a number of people thrown together in a grave, like the forces of Bandera did with Jews and others. In Izium, each person was buried separately with the cross and, if available, details about their identity. That's called a cemetery in most people's language, not in Ukraine. Also, Think about this. Joe Biden was just asked on 60 Minutes about Taiwan. The question. So, unlike Ukraine, to be clear, sir, U.S. forces, U.S. men and women, would defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion? Biden's response, yes. He will meet Liz Truss at the U.N. General Assembly, taking place now and ongoing uh, for some days. This Liz Truss, who promised the UK would spend more on Ukraine in 2023 than it has this year. So look, these lunatics, they don't care about you. They don't care about democracy. They don't care about freedom or whatever. They're destroying our future. They're destroying the economies with sanctions and with green policy and with Wall Street, City of London bailouts, the financialization of the economy and the priority of that financial system over human life and human flourishing. Over 10 million people in the UK are behind on their energy payments, energy bills that are exploding, in which Liz Truss has announced some sort of cap to try to limit um, the costs. But in Moldova, the government has a new website to help direct you to the nearest forest where you can gather firewood to heat your home. You want to talk about, you know, a green policy? Cutting down trees and collecting firewood to heat your home, that's not green. You know, what, what protects forests? Why do we have as many trees as we do? Well, nuclear power, coal, oil, natural gas, these high energy density forms of power, these are what save trees, otherwise we would have used them all so far um, for industrialization and so forth. Hungary is under attack by the European Union for pursuing its own policy, which I thought is what democracy and sovereignty mean. Not in the EU, where they're trying to change the policy to end the unanimity required for major decisions, and where they're sanctioning one of the member states, Hungary, for not going along with the others. They are criminalizing political dissent in the U.S., across Europe, on an individual, and as we see with Hungary, even on a state level. They demand the collapse of the economy, the acceptance of rationing, of poverty. Industry in Europe is being destroyed. Reports are that over half of fertilizer production in Germany is now offline due to the enormous increases in price of natural gas uh, and other industrial inputs. The U.S. is heading that way as well. You know, Joe Biden was asked about inflation, saying, well, the rate's barely increasing. Yet yeah, the rate of increase of inflation was barely increasing, but we still have a year-on-year -year inflation level that's unheard of and devastating. Meanwhile, more people in the world are standing up and saying that they simply are not going to be bullied in accepting a rules-based order that represents the interests of just a few actors on the world stage. African leaders are saying they won't be bullied into destroying their energy and economic future to appease the green gods of the West. South Africa is spinning back up 8 gigawatts of coal power that had been taken offline. This is a sensible policy. Look, remember back to the concept of security, of a future that was presented in the February 4th joint statement uh, by China and Russia when the leaders of those two nations uh, met together in person February 4th and issued their statement. Two aspects of that, no expansion of NATO, and security must be considered in an indivisible way. You can't have security for one person without security for another. Any attempt to impose a security regime that does not represent, recognize, and respect Russia's legitimate security concerns is one that is not designed for security, but, as Putin called out, for the destruction of the Russian state. Russia and China are seen 
as the inevitable enemies of the Western financial oligarchy. They cannot allow Russia's independence. They cannot allow China's economic rise. The existence of rival powers on the planet must not be tolerated among these layers. And that's why they have created over years the situation that we now see unfolding in Ukraine where ever since the 2014 coup, not a democratic event, the coup in Ukraine that brought in place the new neo-Nazi, including government, ever since then, we have seen what has essentially been a promoted civil war within Ukraine that has, as intended, drawn in Russia. This is what's happening right now. The fact that U.S. and Canadian naval ships went through the Taiwan Strait within 36 hours of Biden's supposed gaffe on 60 Minutes, which, by the way, is exactly the strategic ambiguity that is promoted with regard to Taiwan. So the fact that Biden says this and then it sort of walked back, that whole thing is explicitly part of U.S., uh, part of, unfortunately, what has been U.S. policy. But look, there is, there is a future for us. We have the Belt and Road Initiative of China, a new paradigm for economic cooperation among nations, a move towards land based, land-connected, rather than landlocked regions of the planet, a way to more fully realize the economic potential and through the development of infrastructure platforms, increase the economic potential of the land surface of this planet. We have the World Land Bridge, promoted by the Schiller Institute, by the LaRouche Movement for decades. You know, we here at the LaRouche Organization have an excellent report on the coming U.S. economic miracle on the new Silk Road. You can read that report and many others under the campaigns menu item at the top of the website or under the menu section if you're on mobile. Um, you can also see Stop Global Britain's Green War Drive, where we explain the connection between green policy, economic destruction, and the drive for war against Russia and against China. This report was released shortly before uh, the Russian special military operation began. And I think you'll see in that report how clearly we're able to lay out what we see unfolding today. So if you have not already uh, seen those reports at the LaRouche organization, please do so. If you are not already a donor, please consider becoming a monthly supporter. You can do that through the donate tab. Uh, we really appreciate it. We operate entirely on individual contributions from people like yourself, and we welcome and value your support. So that's the end of the update today. Thanks for joining us at the LaRouche organization. Harley Schlanger will be back tomorrow.